Today I'm going to go over the basic function and operation of a still air box. Now some people assume the abbreviated SAB stands for sterile air box and that's just not the case. Uh, there's no need really to sanitize the interior of your still air box. I mean, let's be reasonable and keep things clean. It shouldn't be dusty and full of all sorts of disgusting stuff. But the way this thing operates is by gravity and still air. So essentially all this thing does is you'll notice the covers. When the covers are on, there's no drafts, eddies, or air movements. There's no turbulence in there to stir up the air. I attempted to fill this with smoke the other day to show how still the air actually becomes inside of your still air box. The smoke is just sitting there perfectly still. It's not fucking moving at all. So as you can see, there is no movement whatsoever until you take the covers off and then begin moving around in there. So. I'm going to show you how to load this first and then go over the still airbox basic theory. Now by now you've probably noticed that this isn't your standard still airbox, but uh, the principles remain the same. You may use be using an upside down tote and that's most likely the case. However, no matter the size, no matter the shape, it's essentially the exact same thing. When loading your still airbox, ensure that you have at least one kind of rack. I suggest two. You'll see I have two different heights of rack here. This smaller or shorter cookie rack is to elevate my jars off of the floor of the still airbox. Now, not only is this box still, uh, but it remains still in order to allow airborne particles to settle via gravity on the floor of the still airbox. And if you're placing your work directly on the floor and moving them around. Essentially, you're just kicking up invisible dust clouds of all sorts of nasty mold spores, pollen, or whatever else you have floating around in here. The second rack is a taller rack which elevates any culture, plates, or dishes to roughly the same height as your jars. This allows for limited exposure time when making transfers between the two vessels. When loading items into your still air box, have a basic idea of how you're going to move. You want to keep your movements uh, as brief and conservative as possible. As the name implies, the air in here should remain as still as possible. You don't want to kick up any previously airborne particles that have settled onto the floor of your still air box through unnecessary movements creating disturbances that could deposit mold spores or whatever else that's in here into your sterile dishes. Now this is when somebody will argue, well, why don't you just sterilize or sanitize the inside of your still air box? Well, because that's impossible. There's no way you can sterilize or sanitize the atmosphere that is exterior to the still air box, which becomes encapsulated within its interior. This is why we rely upon physics to maintain sterile work conditions rather than sanitizing agents or the impossibility of actually sterilizing the entire interior of a still air box. Once all of your work has been loaded inside of your box, you must allow enough time for all of the invisible airborne particles to settle via gravity. For a box of this size, I'm going to allow about three hours for the invisible airborne particles to settle and then remove my armhole covers. Now, you're not likely to have armhole covers like mine. However, I do recommend covering your holes with something, some sort of flap, in order to maintain a still air environment. Otherwise, the particles will remain aloft within your still air box. Now, the armholes need to be much larger than your arm. As you can see, there's free movement in and out. By having a larger opening, you're allowing for less turbulence to take place as your hand moves in and out of here. Now, this is when somebody's going to argue, well, why don't I just put some gloves on my hole and turn it into a glove box? Well, the issue remains the same. When you seal up the hole with gloves, you are now disturbing a greater amount of internal atmosphere than you would just by inserting and moving your arm around freely.
If this sounds counterintuitive to you, just do a little thought experiment. Imagine that this hole was covered with a neoprene diaphragm with a little handle on it. Now, what would happen as you extend and retract the diaphragm? Well, that's gonna create a vortex type disturbance in the internal atmosphere. Now simply imagine that within the diaphragm there are finger holes and enough room to stick your arm in. It's essentially the exact same thing. As your gloved hand, where it is tight, moves around and pumps the diaphragm that is the arm piece that is attached to your hole, you're creating a vortex-like disturbance within your still air box, rendering it less still. And as the name implies, still air is the name of the game, obviously. There's no way you're going to be able to maintain perfect stillness, but the more still you can make the inside of your box, the higher the likelihood that you will be able to maintain a sterile environment within your sterile vessels. Now, the more turbulence experienced within your still air box, the greater the likelihood that you will have contaminant particles floating around on turbulent eddies being drafted into your sterile work. Now, that's obviously not good and can re result in mold. It's not a guarantee, but it is a greater chance. Now, I'm aware that glove boxes do exist and that they are a thing. However, microbiology, uh, or at least this application of microbiology is not the intended purpose. The intended purpose is to have a sealed container where the atmosphere has been replaced with something like argon or nitrogen because the materials you're working on are sensitive to the exterior atmosphere. So it doesn't really apply to mushroom cultivation and therefore should be avoided because of the reasons I stated, which are turbulence and a higher likelihood of depositing airborne particles in your sterile media. Now with that basic theory out of the way, we can get to working in a still air box. Now, prior to making transfers from your dishes to your grain jars, I recommend loosening and uh, that way you have a lot more limited movement within your box. Now, when taking a transfer clamshell by elevating your lid slightly, this will prevent anything from falling into your culture. Take your wedge, place it inside of your grain jar. No need to tighten your jar until you're done doing all of your transfers. When you're done, obviously use parafilm or cling wrap to seal up your plate again. Close off your jars by tightening the lids, give it a good shake, and allow time to colonize. Now, grain to grain can be done inside the still air box as well. Simply remove the lid. Open the lid of the receiving jar, dump in your myceliated grain, close up, close your master jar if there's anything left over, give it a shake and allow time to colonize at room temperature on your shelf. Now, this is basically how you run your still air box. The same applies to liquids. If you're inoculating a liquid culture, the same applies with a loose lid open up your jar by clamshelling, take your proven clean culture, inoculate, close, and allow to colonize at room temperature. And that's essentially it. Now this is probably the time when I should add that still air, as mentioned before multiple times, is still air. Gravity and still air is what wins the game here, adding any number of contraptions like filtered blowers, you name it, whatever it is. Anything that disturbs the interior still atmosphere of your still air box defeats the purpose of a still air box. Whether the incoming air is filtered or not, what you are doing is creating turbulence which will kick up anything that is invisible laying on the floors or walls, ceilings, etc. of your still air box and keep them aloft, floating and rotating within your still air box, which gives it a greater chance of finding its way into your sterile, sterile work. So 
I do not suggest adding blowers, filters, turning it into some sort of still airbox, flow hood, Frankenstein kind of monstrosity. None of that's necessary. It's actually counterproductive. Not only is it counterproductive, but it's complicated. This is as simple as it needs to be. This is as simple as it gets. There's no need to complicate. Complicated contraptions cost money and it lowers the efficiency and effectiveness of your still air box. So if you ever have the inclination to modify your still air box, either with gloves or with some sort of blower system, filters, etc., think to yourself, why am I spending money to defeat the purpose? It's not making anything better. It's actually making it worse. Can it work? Yes. Can you get mushrooms? Yes. Is it the most effective way to get sterile, exanic cultures? It absolutely is not. So when you think, hey man, maybe I'll turn this still air box into some sort of flow hood contraption, just don't. Even if you were to plug an actual laminar flow machine into this unit, into a still air box, the geometry of the box automatically with all of these right angles, even if they were rounded, would produce turbulence. So right away, your laminar flow has become turbulent flow, chaotic flow, which de defeats the purpose of laminar flow, and at the same time defeats the still air found within your still air box. So it's a 2-4 for stupidity. Don't do it.